am live. We are live. One, two, live and online. Hi, folks. Welcome back. Try to ignore the background. This is my studio. This is my office. Sometimes things happen. Focus here. Can I see myself? Yes. Geza from Prague. Welcome. Lakramira. Welcome. Just to say it again, this is a news news. Welcome back to the first and only channel dedicated entirely to the long lost, lost, not now, <laughs> to the long forgotten, to the obscure, to the not yet known items in perfumery. This is Dana. And if you log in, please let us know where you're coming from. Mr. Ashfak, hello from Bangladesh. I'm just going to fill in the blanks where I have it. Today we're doing a shorter um, session for lack of time. I'm going to try to keep it under 30 minutes, which is so long for most of the people visiting here and complaining about how long my reviews are. Um, Kyle from All Faction Sense Memory. Olfactive Sense Memory. Sorry, I always get it wrong. <coughs> Los Angeles. We're going to talk about us as well at some point from Romania. Happy to have you, folks. Today we're going to talk about a, a house that has not been getting um, from Egypt. Shandid, welcome. We're from all over the place. Is it discontinued? I don't know. I have no idea. It was introduced in 2019 and I met this fragrance in Milan in April, May. Abdel from Puerto Rico. All right, we're not doing a roll call, so you can visit at any time if you want. Today we're talking about Papillon Rouge. Papillon Rouge is a house that stayed with me after Milan. Now, in Milan, I wasn't able to visit pretty much I mean, I probably wasn't able to visit half of the stands there, but I was indeed visiting quite a few, and my um, propension is to go talk to those I've never heard about. I am not necessarily attracted to the most popular, to the most, you know, sparkly. That's not what I'm made of. I am very well known in my circles to usually opt for the least travel roads, for the least probable um, options to be attracted to the uh, more random um, combinations of effects. So this is why at, in Milan, at Essence, just like I was at PT, I tended to go towards the areas where nobody was going, to talk to the stands that nobody was talking about, or two, and so on and so forth. One of these stands, to my surprise, now was Papillon Rouge, which, um, again, stayed with me as one of the best discoveries at Milan, and which I keep seeing popping in the feeds or mentions of some of the people I trust the most when it comes to taste. Now, that's not to say they're going to end up as a good business. I don't know if they will be. That's not to say they are going to ever be popular. I don't know if they're going to be. But I believe um, they create quality work. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, Papillon Rouge is a French house. Let's give it a little bit of a um, history. Papillon Rouge is a French house uh, started, depending where you look, in either 2007 or 2011, or somewhere in between, by a person named Virginie Chonet. Virginie Chonet, Madame Chonet, uh, used to work for Garlin and Louis Vuitton and the Trust. Uh, she worked for Cadbury, I believe, before that. She is a very well-known professional in her field, um, a director of image, good uh, design eye, and a good creative resource, which at some point she decided to use to start a new house. Nobody knows who made these fragrances, or at least I don't know who made these fragrances. She doesn't talk about it. 
Um, she actually doesn't show as a name anywhere um, on the websites, um, in interviews. I had to dig very deeply to find out her name. I believe she was there in Milan. She was not very friendly. The stand was not very decorated. It was not sparkly. There was nobody there. Okay. Um, there was no material. There was no decor. There was no nothing, nothing, nothing. And the person there was not very friendly. You would go and you would ask. I don't know if it's a matter of her not speaking good English. And again, I'm not even sure that the person who was there at the stand was this uh, Madame Virginie Chonet. Might have been. I don't remember her face enough to search by, by look. And again, the fact that this Galan executive started a house is probably kept under wraps because I don't know why, politics, who knows? I, You know I don't do these things. So um, all I know is that Madame Chonet started this house. She was a director at Garland. <coughs> Maybe, no idea. I'm going to give you as much information as I have. If any of you know more or better, please correct me, complete me. Let's make a whole picture out of this. Um, so the, the person at the stand was dry, curt, wasn't trying to do anything too friendly. So I just kind of gave everything a quick nose and it stayed with me enough that I went back and I said, I joined the cemetery, yes. Anna. Anna knows what I'm talking about. She was there in Milan, and I think we exchanged impressions at some point. Uh, if any of you speak Spanish, go check out Ana y el Perfume, her blog, because she has a fantastic nose, and she is one of the people whose taste I trust. Um, Maria from Romania, Gabriela, Loredana Cosa, Cosash, and Cristio from Virginia. Welcome, everyone. So, um, I went there, quick nose, fragrance view. Hi, Peter, how are you surviving? Peter's launching his new line and he's dying for the sake of Ephra and all the other tough things happening where he is hanging there, dude, or move to some other place where they don't care about these things. Today we're talking about um, Papillon Rouge, which is one of the houses that everybody was ignoring in Milan that stayed with me and uh, that I ended up buying from. Um, they're also one of those houses that don't offer anything to anybody. They don't give a damn about influencers or like reviewers uh, and all that shit. Sorry. Um, so they're like, yep. 60 euros. I'm like, okay, here. <laughs> this lady was so scary that I'm like, um, yeah, take my money. Take my money. Give me this. Bye-bye. Thank you for letting me buy from you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I paid 60 euros for this bottle that I'm going to be talking about today. I think they sell for more than that online. I think I saw them at like 140 for a 50 mil. So they're pretty pricey, I believe, but I think it's worth it. Uh, subsequently, I tested the rest of the line, the rest of what this house is doing, and I believe pretty much all of them are fantastic in a very French way, in a very classical formation way, in a, a very classical aesthetic type of way. So if you're not into that and you want a more modern, contemporary, haute couture, conceptual perfumery, you might not be able to find it in, in, in this house. But if you want something well-constructed, give it a chance. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe. I don't know. All I can say is that they were not friendly. I was scared by this lady. And I still am. Uh, so the house is called Papillon Rouge, which means red butterfly. Uh, the regular line bottles are bigger and rounder and looking different and cheaper. Um, they're extremely stratified and again very well composed in a very French matter of perfumery. Separate to them there's a patchouli dedicated line called HPK and this is what this fragrance is part of. HPK stands for Haute, 
Haute Parfumerie Connection with a K. The name, the uh, packaging, everything is bad. Everything is not necessarily as polished as the fragrances inside. Let's just put it out there. The quality of the packaging, the design, nothing is current. Nothing is extremely original. Nothing is wowing. Uh, this will not necessarily look good on your shelf. But this is not what this house is about. Uh, going back to the regular uh, collection, it's built around um, uh, butterflies. Papillon means butterfly. Or it means uh, bow tie, because that's what a bow tie is called in French. Papillon. Um, the Papillon Rouge regular collection um, uh, has about 11 fragrances, I think, in the regular um line and there are six fragrances in this in this hpk or there were six fragrances fragrances in this hpk patchouli dedicated collection if you go on fragrantica there are only five so i don't know what happened to this it's my luck the ones that i pick as special either disappear or get disconnected or they're not launched yet I have no idea what happened but i will talk to it in blind, just like I often do with other stuff nobody's heard about. So HPK collection looks like this. This is a 50 mil bottle. The regular bottles are rounder with the smaller red um, uh, label. They're inspired by different uh, butterflies found in different places on earth. There's a disconnect between the two collection. I have no idea why they decided to brand it as such their business. I don't think it makes any sense, but it doesn't matter. I will speak to it the way it is, the way I find it, and with very, very uh, little um, relative context, okay? This is the, the label of this. All of them say patchouli. This is called Souvient Toi, and I will talk a little bit. No idea. I have not checked their their uh, website, and if you are on the website right now, please don't mention stuff because uh, we don't want to get influenced. But when I'm done, you can come back and let me know if this sounds like anything you see there. If they change the name, I would like to know. This is how I bought it when I visited them. They did have six of these. This is one of them. Um, and this is the one I picked, and this is the one I bought for 60 euros. Like I said, the other few. Hi, Mama. This is Cornelia. The other few that I liked from this collection, from the patchouli collection, which is patchouli-based, was Pardonne-moi, which means forgive me, and it was uh, uh, like an oily, uh, immortel type of fragrance. Um, Rendez-vous, or something like this. I have a few notes, which was kind of fruity, kind of milky, maybe some fig leaf fig in there, something, <laughs> something like this. These are my notes, and that's very cryptic, I know, but this is all I wrote down. And the third one that I liked from this line of HPK was Shaman, which was a um, slightly animalic, a little bit um, kind of powdery... Um, but also dark, deep patchouli um, uh, fragrance. So those other three are the ones that I thought were good in the line. The other two, um, I haven't noted any special impressions on. Uh, I think one is Kashmir and one is uh, Midnight or Midi Mini, something like that in French. And they were fine. I don't think they were at the level of the other ones. And this was the one that I thought was the most special. Anna called it upstairs. She said um, she's here for the cemetery. This does smell like cemetery. Uh, Souviens-toi in French means um, remember. 
it's a it's an imperative verb you remember this Me more like an uh future and like past in the future kind of a thing well all of this will have come to pass uh remember this my child blah 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 so so it's a it's a very um officious poetic um commanding way of telling somebody make sure you memorize this make sure you bring it back rememorize it remember it um when the time comes kind of a thing it's a very interesting uh title for a fragrance it's a very ominous title for a fragrance and i think it's pretty inspired uh considering what this smells like it smells like death no like that like 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 a funeral i know a lot of people bring white flowers in in the funeral context they talk about lilies they have this uh, 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 kame. what is it called in english idea of some TB riddled beauty from you know the turn of the century lying down on a bed of camellias and dying and agonizing and very poetic death. Um, for me, those type of flowers or those types of combinations don't necessarily smell like death. I grew up in an Eastern Orthodox context, so for me, death is made of you know beeswax and uh, a frankincense. This smells like the death I would like to read about and conceptually in my brain I build. It's very patchouli. It opens with um, a very mentholated patchouli. And I know I keep saying this, but patchouli is a brush. It makes, it's part of the minty family of plants or the... Um, dead nettles family of plants. They're together, they're cousins. Um, I think the name comes from, and this is the bit of information for today, for those of you who don't know and want the nerdy stuff, pachai. Pachai is a Tamil word for green. So patchouli is supposed to smell green and can sometimes, depending on where it's coming from or how it's treated, smell slightly minty, men mentholated. It opens with this very mentholated bit that is green in a, in a way that I haven't smelled before. It almost smells like when you break a twig, you know, the, the sap from a tree, but a little bit woody. So it's a, it's a, it's a more intense, more concentrated green, um grass smell so if you take the green grass smell and you distill you bring it down you you concentrate it that's kind of what it smells like without going into hay it's a very interesting green top note which i've never smelled before and it's mixed or coming from yes sometimes uh, from the dark patchouli and myrrh sometimes Coca-Cola that did the tannic kind of uh, tonic almost vibe. Me too. So, so this is a this is a strong, very alive. I'm drooling a little bit. Uh, green that I usually feel when I break a branch or I break a twig from a tree. So it's like a a, a woody green but a live wood, if that makes any sense. So the top is very wet. It's very interesting. It doesn't smell like water. It doesn't have marine. It doesn't have any uh, fruity, juicy, any of that. It just sm smells alive and wet. There's a little bit of unripe avocado. Do you know what an uh, unripe avocado smells like? So it's, a, it's that kind of like unctuous green not finished uh, type of uh, very hard to describe green papaya sometimes has that kind of little bit slimy a little bit it's unfinished green but intense and a little bit it's not very astringent but it is a little bit 
maybe a little bit bitter just just unfinished <laughs> unfinished unripe or very live um branch green so sap <coughs> there's also a little bit of rubber note different from tarry woody um different from plastic doll head it's just uh, almost like like the chiclet gum without a flavor so it's, it's like rubbery live sap rubber <coughs> smell high cuisine and a little bit of pepper it's a very uh, the the top is a little bit hard to swallow or smell it's it's a lot. It's just so much of this. And of course, patchouli is there. Everything from the base transpires through. It's not like you smell only what I just said. Everything else comes from the bottom. So it's it's literally like a punch in the face. Seriously. I haven't smelled something similar. I don't know if ever, but definitely in a long time. It's painful. <laughs> but it's painful good. It's like a too hot bath kind of a thing. It's just wet and a little bit hot and just everywhere. Not short circuiting, but so, so damn much. You're br it's burning your nostrils. <laughs> your brain is burning, burning. Okay, I'm yelling into the camera with a fake German accent. I am so sorry. I should not do that me all right <coughs> after all that settles down the middle which is a very fleeting yes yeah it's a i like that like in the beginning in the middle of the turn it yes your brain is kind of like and your body is following suit um the middle is somewhat <laughs> I'm okay, Scottish. I'm really bad at accents. I have a good year, but I'm bad at accents. Never tried. Okay, Scottish. Let's go with Scottish. Yes, burning your nostrils. It is burning your brain. Ha! There you go. <laughs> I did not fake a German accent. I was not mimicking or impersonating anybody just to put it out there. No, I was not. Unless I do a push-up, you cannot tell on me. For some reason, like, did a sulfur. <laughs> for, some, for some reason, it seems like the only thing missing is sulfur. Yes, sulfur it doesn't have. The middle, though, comes in with a very um, peculiar undertone. Because it makes me think of dough, wheat, Wet wheat, but not as wet as the start. The start, okay, is very wet. What follows is slightly more floral and more dry. So we're in the moist phase. I hate that word, but it's the best I can use because it's not wet, it's not bone dry. It's somewhere in between with the impression of wet dough. Um, I have... I smell uh, yeast. I smell beer a little bit. I smell dough. I smell wheat. I smell that kind of very... Um, for those of you in the other hemisphere um, and the other side of the world, uh, maybe Marmite, Vegemite. There's some sort of gunky, uh, wet but fertile smell to this that is a very, very interesting wheaty, ricey, uh, something. So um, there's, there's, <laughs> there's something like that in there, combined with a little bit of elang, combined with a little bit of um, hyacinth, so fat, wet flowers, think... Uh, Tulip. I've talked about this before. Think a little bit of tulip. Think a little bit of um, uh, maybe water flowers like uh, lotus. Something like that. So the flowers themselves are moist, 
moist uh, blah, 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 themselves. A little bit of fermentation. There's a little slight bit of fermentation, which would be interesting. As far as I know, patchouli, when it is processed, and if any of you is operating with your own um, ingredients, Kyle, uh, Peter, maybe uh, maybe you guys can tell us. As far as I know, patchouli, um, in order to be extracted from the plant, the plant needs to be dried and either you scald it or you slightly ferment the leaves in order to release, to break the cells and release some of the uh, flavors that we operate with from the patchouli plant. So I don't know where it's coming from. It's not extremely endolic, but the this bit of ilangi thing that I smell might uh, impair that, or maybe it's coming from this... Um, uh, wheaty, yeasty, malty type of uh, undertone. I have no idea, but there is a very sweet note of fermentation in there um, that kind of makes this death. <laughs> um, it makes it different. And then the base. Santitar, welcome. And then the base hits, and the base is literally like one of those, you know when they pour asphalt? They're those machines that come with a big cylinder of metal that is extremely hard and very heavy, and it's kind of like rolling on top of the asphalt and kind of like flattens it like this. That's what it feels like. The base comes rolling, and you are dead. You are done for. You are dead finished. It is finished. That was not German either. Again, if I don't do a push-up and a round twirl, it's not German. It's Scottish and Welsh accent. Yes, that's what it is. Because your brain is dead. Your brain is crushed. Okay? Carnation, brothers and sisters. It's Czech accent. <laughs> okay, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> carnations, mountains of carnations, the little bits. I'm not talking about the wet, slightly musty, bigger ones. There might be some in there just to fluff things up a little bit, but no, this is the tiny super perfumey, extremely floral, intense, bitter, death-like. Uh, we're in a cemetery and somebody just jumped into the um, um, hole in the ground on top of the coffin and causing a scene kind of carnation. That's what I'm talking about. Mountains of it fossilized amber that makes you feel like that you have you have to you have to show me tell me about it which one because these ones are literally like being crushed under one of those cement rollers steam rollers whatever they're called i don't know um yes on top of the tomb covered crushed crushed by carnations i think that was russian i don't know if you have carnations and if you have uh dead people there you have it you have no that was what you want that was, that was persian i am lost in accents here but this is what it feels like carnations to the brim carnations to make you cry carnations to touch you on the inside of the nose and grab the air off of you it's I've never smelled anything like it, and maybe this is why I kind of grabbed it. Maybe this is why you, you can't find it, because nobody likes this damn thing. But it's such a vivid, such a well-blended, such a, a extraordinary application of death. Uh, this is nothing ethereal. This is nothing conceptual. This is nothing uh, inter interpretative. 
This is not haute couture. This is this is literally palpably um, funeral. Oh, just funeral. Um, apart from this carnation, I smell, I, I think I mentioned uh, the hyacinth because it shows a little bit in the middle. Um, it provides a little bit more structure um, body if it needed any. Um, I smell a little bit of tolu. Um, I smell a little bit of what I associate with long pepper. Um, if you've never tried long pepper, for those of you who don't live somewhere where it's uh, available, try to get your nose on it. Um, it's this, I associated with the, what's, what stays in poplar trees after that fluffy gunk has gone away. The flowers of the poplar tree are very fluffy. It looks like cotton, right? Um, in Romania, when they flower in the spring, everywhere it's filled with this poofy, cottony things all over the streets. It's like blankets of it. What stays, so the flower has been pollinated, you know, um, it makes seeds. It looks like a little dense, um, little... I don't even know what to call them. Tassels, I guess, where the seeds are very tightly packed together and they're long. This is what long pepper looks like as well. So if you break it, little <laughs> little individual seeds come apart very easily. But if you leave it the way it is, it looks like a little, like this, something with very packed, dense, almost woody from the outside. If you break it and you smell it, it's peppery, but very, very floral and slightly sweet, a little bit woody. It's one of the most fantastic smells. And if any of you is a, is a perfume maker, please, please orient your attention towards long pepper. I think it's one of the, should be one of the, the, the cool <laughs> ingredients of the future. Um, I can't wait to smell something centered around long pepper. I feel... A, whatever combination this is made of, but I feel a slight notion of long pepper in the back end. This doesn't necessarily make it spicy in the condimenty way, but it's spicy anyway because the carnation is slightly spicy to my nose. Talked about the to tolu. There's also a clean, almost a live cedar, so almost like when you cut the wood, um, this is not old and polished. This is very raw, um, not very sharp. It's not pungent. Um, and the cedar sometimes, depending on how the weather is, I don't know my no how my nose is doing. Sometimes that transpires into the top. Sometimes I can feel it from the first puff. Sometimes I can't. It needs to settle um, until it gets there. I smell a little bit of um, alemi, maybe tiny bit just to keep it together and, and make it unctuous um and a little bit of what i think is styrax maybe becomes slightly flinty in the end in any case the overall um notion the overall impression for this is um pretty impressive <laughs> I have spoken. The impression is impressive. You know what I mean. The the the, the <laughs> okay. Yes, please. So, if you need to um, bring this down to um, just a couple of notes, I would say patchouli, carnation to the gods, carnation to make you sweat, carnation, to make you go like this and jump on a coffin when you see one, and something like wheat or um, beer or yeast or malt or something. These three are the main um, ingredients in my book. Um, and, um, the other ones are just there to support. It's very <laughs> wilted corsage. No, 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 Th no, no, no. This is not a corsage. This is a flower shop 
being closed because all the carnations died. This is what it is. It's not a corsage. This is a mountain of carnations. This is what it is. You can't fake tears. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wedding program. So this is it, folks. This is HPK from the patchouli collection from the um, uh, uh, Papillon Rouge house. I wish they got their marketing aligned. I wish uh, they made a little bit more sense and somehow incorporate the collections. They don't have to, of course, but I wish to see them connected because I believe the Papillon Rouge regular collection is also fantastic. Fantastic. It's done with a really good hand. I have no idea, again, who worked on these. If you can and will find out the perfumer, please let me know. Um, I'd love to just, you know, congratulate them. This is really, really good work. This is fine calibration, the best of French styles. It's very rare that you see this kind of quality work uh, and so consistent within itself. Again, this is not modern. This is doesn't necessarily make sense from an image perspective. This is um, not obviously not talked about. I think it's severely underrated. I do see people I trust bringing it up here and there, but you know you can't build hype uh, if you don't have a solid. Uh, thing to talk about. Um, and it's not bad enough to become cool. You know what I mean? There are a lot of, it's so bad, it's good kind of a things in the world today. The hipsters, you know, made it so that it's possible to have something that it's so unintentionally non-designed, not cool, so mommy-like or whatever, that it becomes cool. This is not bad enough to be cool, but it's uh, style-wise but it's good enough quality wise to be mentioned and yet it's not happening. So I think, I think we should keep an eye on Papillon Rouge. I think the concept of Papillon Rouge is cute and it's nice. It's built around rare types of, of uh, butterflies and each of them has a name corresponding to a species of butterfly with a, a story that kind of inspired the fragrance. Um, I think it's great. Um, it's delicate, it's very French, it's very romantic. They're all completely unisex. Please believe me on this. Um, this particularly, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, as long as you're dead, it works. <laughs> For the patchouli collection, you have to like patchouli. It's not a hippie style patchouli, and it's not a very uh, modern conceptual. Um, like I said, avant-garde, very niche type of uh, asp patchouli either. Um, it's very French. It's interpreted. It's blended. It's made to work. Um, but you do like you do have to like patchouli. So give it an eye. Look for Papillon Rouge, and if you can, look for HPK Paris. Haute Parfumerie, connection with a K. I'm guessing it's a it's a liability naming type of licensing reason for which they picked connection. I don't think it's inspired, but it is what it is. So this is called Focus Souvienta, which means make sure you remember. It smells like a funeral. And Geza said... He thinks he found it under a new name. What is it? Really? They renamed it? What's the new name? Dun, da, da, da. Secret Fever? What? No, I don't feel leather, but I was talking about the rubbery thing, tarry thing, so that may be it. Carnations, patchouli leather, boozy malt. Okay, there you have it. It has to be this. Mr. Oz, hello. If you guys don't know Mr. Oz's channel, go give it a chance. Give it an eye. He's kind of like me, but male. <laughs> and nerdy reviews, and they're not as long. But he's in the same vein. So go, go, go give him an eye if you can. Um, 
So I guess this has been renamed as Secret Fever. Boozy Malt, which is the yeast probably that I was telling you about, yeast, uh, Vegemite, uh, wheaty type of fermented undertone. It's not boozy in the boozy, no. Not the way the niche is describing boozy nowadays, but malty, yes. I, I even meant meant it. Spicy carnations, yes, I talked about that. Patchouli, I talked about that. Leather is probably the rubber I mentioned already. And the indoles. So there you have it. Um, it's renamed Secret Fever. What the fuck indeed? Not a good idea. I don't know why. Sugi to us so much better. Um, apparently it's not on their site, Anna. On their site, the sixth one in the collection is described as how I was describing this in blind. So I don't know. A new marketing guy, hence the disconnect. Hired a Desi marketing guy. What's a Desi? It's a fever that gets you dead. Yes, it is. Secret fever. No. Such a definitely worse name. Anyway, that was it for today, folks. Um, showing you again. If you like this kind of nerdy facts and nerdy reviews, Daisy, people from subcontinent, got it. I didn't know that. Subcontinent meaning from uh, from the rest of India, like the one that's not necessarily part of Asia as well. It's like subcontinent. Okay. I don't watch porn. Yes, I do. I just don't know Daisy. <laughs> what does Daisy have to do with porn? Hello. Huh. All right. Um, if you like this kind of nerdy facts about fragrance and perfumes and perfumery, you want to learn more about Obscure, hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends. <clears throat> Tell your mothers. Tell your whoever you think should benefit from this kind of information. Go visit Mr. Oz as well. If you speak Spanish and you like reading rather than watching reviews, go uh, to Ana y el Perfume because she has a fantastic written blog. Um, you're welcome, Isabella. Come back next week, because I have a... Actually, every week I have weird stuff for you. So uh, you know where to find me. Tell others, blah, 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 share, like, blah, you know, the whole thing, if you want. If you're in New York in November, we'll see you there. And in the meantime... Keep it kind, but keep it real. Keep it real, <laughs> and don't try <laughs> these accents at home. Thank you all, and I will see you next time. And stream, and boom.